Hi, I hope you're doing so, so well. And today I'll be sharing a very amazing thing with you. Like you can see, how to compute your GPA and CGPA using the 4.0 scale. Okay, before now I did a video where I actually shared on how to compute your GPA and CGPA if you're an undergraduate student in a Nigeria university. But funny enough, I realized that there is a school and probably there are even more schools. It's a private school that makes use of, of the 4.0 scale. And that's the reason why I'm doing this video, to really help those who want to measure, um, compute their GPA using the 4.0 scale, 4.0 scale. Now, why am I doing this video? Number one, after my previous video on GPA computation, I found out a Nigerian university that is making use of the 4.0 scale. And also, secondly, most universities in Europe and America are making use of the 4.0 GPA system. And for many people who studied in Nigeria, or probably your previous result was in the 5.0 scale, how can you really compute it in using the 4.0 scale? And also, to help you run a personal evaluation on your results in case you need to travel or you need to study in an international university. So that's why this is very, very essential. Now, what are some of the key terms you need to take note? Your course unit, which is the unit assigned to each of the courses that you are doing. Number two, your grade point, which is the point attached to every score that you get. Number two, your total course unit. That's the total unit of all the courses you're offering a semester. Your total grade point, which is the total point of what is called in each of those courses. Your grade point average, which is the same thing as GPA, your cumulative grade point average, CGPA, and then your grade class. So I'll be looking at all of these very quickly as we go ahead. Now, if you're making of the 4.0 scale, in an instance where you scored between 70 to 100%, if the grade is seen as an A, and what you have there is four points. If you score 60 to 69, it means your grade is B, and then your grade point is 3.0. If you scored a score between 50 to 59 percent, that's a C, and then you have two points. If you score, if you score between 45 to 49 percent, that's D, and it means you have one point. But if you score below 45, that's between 0 to 44, that's an E, and that's zero points. Well, I don't expect anyone to score a minus except there's something really wrong or you have offended seriously that lecturer and then he just chooses not to forgive you. So it means the least score you're expected to have is zero. So let's go on into the computation very quickly so that you can really know how these work. And then you can begin to compute, um, you can begin to compute your result yourself and then you can see how it fits into the international standard and it will help you begin to evaluate and utilize that result. Or probably in your university, you make it of the four point grade point, then this can so so help you compute your result. Now, for example, let's assume a student who came in in part one. Part one in Nigeria is also known as the 100 level. And the student has to do these courses. I think there are four courses or seven courses there. That's CMP 101, CMP 105, CMP 103, MTS 101, MTS 103, STAR 101, and GST 101. And then those are the course units attached to them. So CMP 101 is a three unit course, 105, two unit course, 103, three unit course. MTS 101 is three unit, MTS 103 is three unit, STAR 101 is two unit, GST 101 is one unit. Now let's assume that student scored 88 in CMP 101, which is 88 is actually an A, okay, and A from the four point scale is four points, okay, and then CMP 105 is then score 55, which is two points from what I shared here, you can see, and then 103, 45, which is one point, and on and on, like you can see. Now, what we simply do is that your your grade point will now be three, which is the course units times the grade point. Okay, the the score point, which is three times four, twelve, three times two, four, three times one, three, three times two, six, three times four, twelve, three times three, two times three, six, one times four, four. 
So what we simply do is that we add the total grade point, which is the total of all this, which is 47, divided by the total cost unit, which is 17. So that the total cost unit for that semester is 17. And then we come in here, the GPA for that semester will be 47, which is the total grade point, divided by the total cost unit, which is 17. It means for that particular semester, the students add a GPA, that's grade point average, of 2.76. 2.76. Now, because that student have had only one semester in that particular institution, it means the cumulative CGPA, the cumulative grade point average for, of that student as at first semester 100 level is 2.76. Now, let's see what happens when the student got into second semester of part one. Second semester of part one. The same way, these are the courses the student, these are the courses the student is offering, and then these are their respective course units. And then we are, these are the assumed score that we think the student at 66, which is B, that's 3.77, which is A, 4.45, which is D, 1.88, which is A, 4.32, which is an E, that's 0 0.67, which is a B, 3.90, which is an A, is 4. Point. And then we do the same thing we did the other time. 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 4 is 12, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 4 is 4. Now, the same thing, how do we calculate the grade point average, the total grade point, which is 42, okay, 42, divided by the total cost unit, which is 16. So we come in here, we have 42 divided by 16, which is 2.63. Now, you will find out that previously, this is the previous GPA, that's as at first semester, the one we computed here is 2.76. So when you get here, the previous GPA is 2.76. But the current GPA for that semester is 2.63. Now, because we now have more than one semester, okay, we have more than one semester, what will happen is our cumulative grade point average is going to be the total grade point, okay, that for first semester and that for second semester, you sum it together, divided by the total cost unit of first semester and the total cost unit of second semester. So we now have 89 divided by 33, which is 2.70. So the previous GPA of that student is 2.76. The current for this second semester is 2.63. Then the cumulative grade point average is 2.70. Now, let's take it one more time. Let's assume this student go to 200 level, which is part two. The same thing, the student, have, the student has all of these courses, all of these courses, 200 level now. Course units, here are the course units. Um, assume score, these are the assume score. Then we have the grade, then the grade point. Just the same way we computed the other time. Now, the total grade point here is 70. And the total cost unit is what? Is 20. Now, as a 200 level first semester, the previous grade point, of, okay, the previous CGP of that student is 2.70. Where do we get 2.704? That's the cumulative grade point as at the previous semester. So it means in this new semester, the previous GPA is 2.70. Now, what's the current GPA? So the current GPA will be the total grade point for this semester, which is 70, divided by the total cost unit of that semester, which is 20, and then the current GPA will now be 3.50. Do you see that now? 3.50. Now, what will be the cumulative? The same way you take all of the total grade points from 100 level first semester, which is 47, Okay, 100 level second semester, which is 42, and now 200 level first semester, which is 70. Divided by, what are, what are the, the total cost unit? Total cost unit, 100 level first semester is 17. Total cost unit, 100 level second semester is 16. And total cost unit in this current semester, which is 200 level first semester, is 20. So we have 159 divided by 55 which is equals to 2.87. Now, what's the reason why 
the cumulative grade point increase. Why? You can see that in the previous GPA, this student had 2.70. Because the current increase, which is 3.50, it will definitely reflect on the cumulative grade point average. If this reduced, if this was really, if this was lower than the previous, by the time you got here, the cumulative grade point average would have reduced. Okay. Now, how do how does um, how do you begin to look at your cumulative grade point? Why is it very essential that you take your cumulative and your current grade point average really important? Why? Because in the grade class. If you are able to graduate with a cumulative grade point average in your final year, in your final semester, if you have between a 3.50 CGPA to a 4.0, you will be awarded a first class honors degree. Okay, you will be awarded a first class honors certificate, which means you finished with a first class. If you have between a 3.00 to a 3.49, you'll be awarded a second class offer certificate on graduation, second class offer. If you have between a 2.0 and a 2.99, you'll be given a second class lower certificate. So you'll be graduated with a second class lower, which people call 2.2. If you have a 1.0 to a 1.99 CGPA in your final semester, as your cumulative grade point average, you would be given a certificate that you graduated with a third class. But anyone who finishes with less than a 1.0, even before you get to final year, that person would have been on probation and eventually withdrawn from the university. So it's very important that you begin to take your academics seriously right from 100 level, right from the time you get to each of your semester in 100 level, you must always target ensuring that your current CGPA, cumulative CGPA, does not go below a 3.50. You can really do your best. You can really commit your heart to it and get the best at it. I hope you got so much value from this video. If you really got so much value, please go to the comment section. For those of you who your Result, your transcript, your transcript was computed with a 5.0 and you want to study abroad, you can recompute your CGPA and see how it falls in in a four-point scale. So you can see how you fit in for the for international admission, maybe for master's degree or for a PhD. So this is very important. And this is the same thing that is done by WES, by ECC, I think it's ECC, and all of those and um, result evaluation platform. So please do well to really like this video, do well to drop a comment, do well to share this video with as many of your friends, and also please do well to subscribe. If you have questions, drop it in the comment section. I will do well to answer them as soon as I can. Keep excelling and keep doing excellently well. Cheers.